growing up doing Friday night pizza nights uh, in Nickelodeon with all my brothers and sisters and my mom baking pizzas on the grill. That is like nostalgic to me. I'll never forget that. And the fact that I get to share now with everyone that, you know, you can cook a pizza on your grill is amazing. And people traditionally think like pepperoni, sausage. That's why I went a different route today and did the barbecue chicken and the smoked chicken because I, I'm so passionate about, you know, cooking meats and using wood and using, you know, different levels of heat and temperatures to really kind of create a different experience every bite of the way and so the barbecue uh, chicken pizza and, and the smoked chicken really comes into play there and and it kind of ties me back to my roots of like on a, on a Sunday and Saturday and during the week if I have time to smoke a whole chicken or a turkey or a brisket I love to do that too but also like hey I can use that meat and, and, and use that to make a, a quick pizza. All right, one of my favorite things to do on any Weber grill is grill a pizza. Today we're gonna to talk through barbecue chicken pizza. And I'm a true believer in grilling your proteins first because that adds the extra flavor to the overall pizza in the long run. So for the barbecue chicken pizza, we're gonna start with the whole chicken. Now, if you're strapped for time, you may think, I can't grill a whole chicken, I don't have enough time. I, I need more time. So what we're gonna do is butterfly this chicken. That'll allow it to cook a little bit quicker so we can get to shredding it and get it on our pizzas. So our first step is gonna be flipping the chicken over, and I like to face it towards me uh, with the, the, where the head would be coming out with the neck and the spine right here. So you can use a very, very sharp knife to do this. I like to use poultry shears. I feel like they're a little bit easier to maneuver. So essentially you're just gonna find the spine of the bird and you're gonna cut on either side right against it. So again, I'll start here at the neck and I'll just work my way in. And good poultry shears will help you cut through this. And then we're gonna get the other side. Sometimes you gotta use a little bit of muscle. You see I took the whole spine out here. Next thing we're going to do is open the, the chicken up and to really get it to butterfly you're going to go into the cartilage of the breastbone, kind of cut through that. And then you're going to push it open like so. Now you could take out some of this stuff. Um, if I had my parry knife I'd probably take out the rib, rib cage. You can take out the, the breastbone here if you want. I like to keep it in because it adds moisture. It sweats when it cooks, so it adds you moisture to the breast meat, which is what we're gonna be using for the chicken. So I'm gonna leave it in, but I will cut off any excess fat and just trim that down. And then we're gonna talk about seasoning. So it's perfectly butterflied. Let's flip it over. It's looking good. Now this chicken is about to go to the beach. So I'm all for presentation. Let's make it look pretty by simply tucking back those wing, wing tips. It'll help prevent them from burning too. And then before we hit the grill, we want to oil and season this puppy. So I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on the back end first. A little bit of salt. And I keep it simple. There's gonna be a lot of flavor and different ingredients in our homemade barbecue sauce with grilling the vegetables. And so we're just gonna do basic olive oil, salt and pepper on this guy. If you really wanna impress your friends, grilling a pizza at a barbecue will do it. It's the trick. Grilling a barbecue chicken pizza, now that's next level. A little bit more oil, more salt and pepper. Now, butterflying this bird up, like I just did, opening up like a book, it's gonna help it cook quicker, which is really nice if you're in a, a time pinch. It'll also help it cook pretty even. 
So when the bird sits whole, you'll notice if you ever do a beer can chicken, sometimes the, the thighs and the legs cook a little bit quicker because they're at the bottom, they're closer to the heat where the breast is up top. It's protected a little by the backbone. This will allow the whole bird to cook pretty even, which is another reason I like butterflying it. Did I get it all? All right, we're gonna go get our grill preheated and get this bird on the grill. All right, in front of me, I have the lovely Weber EX with the built-in technology, and we are going to be smoking on this gas grill. So I'm gonna teach you how to set up a smoker box on it and how I like to do it. You'll notice I have a flavorizer bar in my hand. What I did is I removed it. They sit on top of the burners below the cooking grates, and I removed it for a purpose of using our smoker box here. I like the heat to get to the, the wood chips as quickly as possible so they can start smoking faster so then I can get my food on quicker and it's a seamless process. So I'm just gonna put this underneath. All right, and so we have this awesome smoker box. You can either put it below or above. Now the reason I am putting it above, uh, right on the cooking grates, above that flame, direct flame to it, is because throughout the cooking process, when I have my bird on the grill and I wanna add more smoke, if I'm like, ah, it's just not quite there yet, all the wood chips have evaporated, I can go ahead and add more to it very easily rather than removing my protein, you know, trying to get it in there, same thing. So this is why we're going on top of the cooking grates here today. So I got my apple wood chips. Now when it comes to poultry, I really like more subtle sweet woods, so I go with more of an apple or a cherry. Apple's personally my favorite with any poultry, so that's what we're gonna do today. So you're gonna first soak them. Wood chips are pretty small in size and shape, so it's really, really important to soak them in water or beer or wine or whatever you desire for at least about an hour. This will allow them to smolder over the direct heat rather than just start up in flames and burn. So that's why we soak them. So I'm gonna get as much in there into the smoker box as I can. So I'm gonna fill it max, as high as it'll go. Close it up, get it in place. Again, it's directly over that flame. I have the flame set up for, for a medium high heat. Maybe I'll go high just to get that wood smoldering. I'm gonna turn the middle burner off and then I'm gonna leave this on medium. So our chicken, once we get that, is gonna go here and it'll be more of an indirect zone. So indirect just means there's no heat directly under the bird and it's baking and roasting convectionally. We're using convectional heat on this butterfly chicken recipe today. We're gonna let this wood start smoking and we're gonna go get our bird. The grill has begun to smoke so we can get our bird on. Look at that. What I am gonna do is this was up high, I just turn it down just a little bit um, because now that we have smoke, it's just gonna continue to smolder. And we'll get our bird on. That's good. So I like to get it right over that indirect zone again, making sure it's laying directly flat on the grates. Again, this burner is off, so we're gonna roast it indirectly. We got our smoker box going. I like to do more of a medium high heat, so we're looking around 450, 500 degrees, and this will cook for about 45 minutes, so that little bit higher of heat will allow it to cook a little bit faster. It's really important to cook your proteins and your vegetables ahead of time. Since this is only going to be baking and cooking for about you know 10 minutes total, you're really not going to get that caramelization in 10 minutes on top of a pizza if the veggies are raw. You're definitely not going to cook your proteins up to temperature. So just keep in mind before you go to build your pizzas that you're, you're giving yourself enough time to grill your chicken, cook your chicken, you know, saute your vegetables and, and, and get those uh, caramelized and nice and tasty so that when you go to build it, everything comes out really tasty. All right, the beautiful thing about this EX model is the interface here just alerted me that my chicken has reached temperature and it's ready to come off the grill. So let's get this puppy off. Woo, look at that. First thing I wanna just disconnect this probe so it doesn't get stuck. 
And I'm gonna come under here with a wide spatula and get this off. And we'll let this bird rest for about 25, 30 minutes, and then we can get to shredding it and building our pizzas. All right, right before we make our pizzas and build those, we wanna make sure to get our grilling stone preheated. It's really important when you're baking a pizza to have that stone preheated ahead of time. So we're gonna put this right in the center of the grate. I love this grilling stone because it has an enamel gloss on it, which is really, really stick resistant. It's great for grilling pizzas, breads, calzones, baking pies, it's awesome. And then we're gonna actually do these pizzas hot and fast. So I'm gonna turn this middle burner on. We're gonna go about a medium direct heat. So everything down to a medium. We'll let this preheat for about 15 minutes while we grill or assemble our pizzas. All right, we smoked our whole chicken. It is time to build our smoked barbecue chicken pizzas. Now we're gonna start with a sauce. Uh, I like to make my own sauce. Um, if you don't have time, you can use your favorite sauce too. What we're working with today is we have a ketchup tomato base with vinegar. This is gonna have that tanginess. We're gonna add some brown sugar to the, the ketchup. That's gonna add some sweetness. A Little bit of granulated garlic. And then chipotle and adobo, the can. This is the adobo sauce from the can. It's smoky, it's got a touch of heat to it. I love using it on my sauce. And then I actually take one of the chipotle peppers and I mince it up with the seeds. Again, you're gonna get that heat from it and that smokiness. And then to finish it up, we have some chili powder. I'm gonna mix this up. What I tell people, anytime you're making a rub or a sauce or anything, always remember you can try it before you put it on your main ingredient. So today we're putting it on the pizza dough, so I give it a little bit of a try. Mmm, it was tasty. If there's something you don't like to it, that's your opportunity to add, hey, I want some more seasoning in there, I need some more salt, or I need this or that, but I'm liking the way this turned out, and this will be a great base for our barbecue chicken pizzas. So you want to get a good amount of uh, flour down on your table first so the dough doesn't stick to it. Now when it comes to making a pizza and grilling a pizza, it's really your preference on the dough. You can make your own dough at home or you can buy a nice pre-made uh, dough. We went with a pre-made one today from, from the market. The main thing you want to think about with dough is you want to let it sit out about an hour to two hours before you're trying to roll it out. That'll let it rise and it'll actually let it form out into a pizza. So at first we're just going to kind of Get our, our roller here. I'm going to put a little bit of flour on it. We're just going to roll this out into a nice little pizza shape. Now, does a pizza need to be a perfect circle? No, it could be whatever shape you want it to be. Someone once made me a heart pizza and I thought it was really cute. So depending on how much dough you're using, this is about a pound of dough, maybe about 12 inch pizza. Let's get in there. Now I like to use cornmeal on whether it's a peel or a pan and go heavy. The reason you do this is because you don't want that dough to stick to the pan when you go to transfer it to your grill. So I'm going to transfer the dough over here. What I like to do is kind of let it slide a little bit, make sure that it's moving around and then just for good measure, throw a little bit more underneath there. This will help again, as I build this pizza, it'll help it slide onto the grill. Now we're going to build our pizza. We have our lovely shredded chicken that we smoked for about 45 minutes on the EX prior to. First thing we're gonna put down is our pizza sauce. We're gonna use about half the sauce because this recipe, you can actually make two pizzas. This is one of the lovely recipes in our Connect app. Barbecue chicken pizzas. I just added the kiss of smoke to it. Because why not? So 
like I said, about half the sauce that we made earlier and get it as close, you know, with a little bit of crust on the edge. It's always nice. Spreading it out. All right. Then we're going to go onto our veg. And remember, we caramelized this beautiful vegetables on the side burner of the, the Genesis grill, which is a great little tool to, you know, bring your, your food outside and have the whole grilling experience and the whole meal be presented on your actual grill. So I'm going to put, again, about half of the ingredients down on the pizza. Spread them out. All right, that's looking good. Now we're going to do our lovely chicken, our smoked chicken from earlier. I shredded the breast meat. Um, just, you know, deconstructed the whole chicken and then I just shredded that meat and with two forks and we're going to use that on top. It has a lovely smoky flavor. I gave a little bite to it earlier. Just kind of be even here. Again, we're going to be saving half of this chicken for the second pizza because let's be honest, one pizza is never enough. Then we go with our cheese. You can do whatever cheese you love. We're going to do pepper jack for this one. It's going to really pair nicely with that beautiful smoky barbecue sauce, those grilled vegetables, and that smoked chicken. More cheese, please. <laughs> All right. This pizza is looking very good. Now it's time to get it to the grill. We got our pizza at our grill. Our stone is nice and preheated. We're going to get this puppy on the grill. You see how nicely that slid off with that cornmeal on there. I'm going to close this. We're going to go hot and fast. I pull up the recipe in my connect hub here. We're going direct heat, more of a medium heat here, about 400 degrees. It's going to be about 10 minutes total at the five minute marker. I'm going to give it a peek, do any rotation if I need to, because the heat coming from the back may be hitting it a little bit hotter and then we'll check it then. All right, we're about halfway through our pizza cook. Let's give it a look. Woo, looking good. So sometimes you get a little bit more browning on the back because of that heat coming from the back. So I like to just give the pizza a little bit of a turn. Helps cook it evenly. Woo, and we'll close that lid. You know what they say, looking ain't cooking. So we'll keep that lid closed and continue cooking on. All right, I just got my notification on my, my app here that my pizza is done. Woo! Look at that beautiful, even browning over the top. Nice little rise in the dough. Got some exposure of the, the chicken pieces and the bell peppers. This is gonna be tasty. All right, let's get this pizza off the grill. Slide it right onto our pan. I'm gonna leave that on for my second pizza. Bring this inside. It is looking mighty tasty. Get it on our cutting board here. And, you know, slicing a pizza, it's kind of how you want to do it. You could either use a knife or a pizza cutter. I'm going to go with a pizza cutter because it's a big boy. I'm just going to cut through that. Oh, listen to that crust. This is going to be tasty. I always think of the grill as I haven't you someone asked me the other day like what grates do you have in your oven I was like oven like I use my oven to store things you know like I have all my cooking equipment in there because my your grill can serve as your your source to cook everything and so I think that's really a nice thing with pizzas is bringing it outside doing it on the grill realizing hey I could bake on this grill I could cook hot and fast on this grill I could do dessert on this grill and then keeping your oven you know clean and for storage is, is the way to go in, in my book and keeping your house cool, especially in the hot summer months is also a plus as well. All right, as my mom would say, it's pizza time. Let's give this a uh, look at that. That's just a lovely crust. Great, great uh, caramelization of the cheese. Let's give this a taste. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. The barbecue sauce, ooh, the smokiness of it, the tanginess, all the grilled vegetables, the smoked chicken in there, ooh, the melted cheese on top, the crust is crispy. Now that is a pizza on a Weber grill. Who would have thought? Enjoy. Enjoy.